Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. Hope y'all been having a great weekend as we uh, wind the weekend down and get this uh, work week started tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a very active week as we, uh, weather-wise, as we've been talking about in multiple videos over the last several days. Seems like we've been talking about uh, this week for the entire month. Um, it's had potential written all over it. We were hoping it was going to have more potential for areas for the south. Still might. North Carolina, you're still in the game. Um, but uh, this is really looking like a mid-Atlantic threat. And uh, it looks like the potential for an ice storm in spots with the first storm and a snowstorm with the second. So we're going to really break that down and really talk about that, guys. If, um, if you haven't subscribed, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to do so. I talk weather. I update uh, every day. Um, some days I take a break. If there's just not a lot going on, I don't do a video. But I talk weather here on the East Coast. I know I got a South Carolina emblem on my uh, photo. But uh, I talk, uh, that's just from where I'm from and kind of where I started talking weather about. So I'm very active on Twitter, very active on Facebook. And I would like to start doing some new thing too. Um, I'm a Christian. And uh, I, I want, I want y'all to just drop a comment if there's anything that you need prayers about. Maybe some of the other people in the comments can uh, pray for you too. Um, I kind of want to use this platform as a way to um, uh, reach out to you guys, too, if y'all need. This is it's a very hectic world right now. There's a lot going on in the world, and uh, a lot of people are struggling. I know a lot of people are having a hard time. So um, if it's an unspoken prayer, if it's something specific you need me to pray about, I would love to pray for you. And uh, I know that's not weather-related, but uh, it's just a shout-out to my audience, and uh, I want y'all to feel like family as we talk here. But Let's uh, start talking about the main reason why you clicked on this video, and that is the weather. So let's get going here. So the GFS run, um, we're going to look at this right here. This is heights, and uh, I've been talking about this piece of energy right here that's going to have a big player on our system right here, and this is for Wednesday night and Thursday. This thing has looked like it's kind of slowed down. Uh, it, look, it was looking like an all-day Thursday event, but the timing has kind of shifted around. So this is the low pressure that's going to create the storm. This area right here is um, is our basically a, a piece of the polar vortex, and each little notch it does here um, influences the storm. It kind of pushes more east. Uh, it's kind of eroding this high pressure or displacing it, if you will, and uh, it's having an impact. Uh, the high pressure was definitely kind of more right here, but this uh, piece of the polar vortex is actually displacing high, pre uh, high, high pressure, and honestly, I think that's influencing and making temperatures that may start to become a problem even for areas in Virginia. Um, and I'll show you kind of what I mean here in, a, here in a second. So definitely stick around. This is going to be a longer video if you really want to know their full breakdown of the storm. But, uh, I, you know, this could help the storm. But really, we don't need this to mess with this high pressure. And it looks like it really is here. It would be awesome to have this uh, 1040, 1041 high pressure sitting right around here. That way you could really have a widespread, say, North Carolina snowstorm, maybe action into South Carolina, more widespread just in general for winter weather. But um, So we're going to talk about that. Here's your watches and warnings. The only thing really related with this storm on the East Coast is um, right here. You have uh, winter storm watches already up, and we're going to kind of break that down here. Uh, this is the National Weather Service for Baltimore and Washington. Um, it shows the watches right here. There's no warnings. It's just watches. But if you look right here, it's mainly, it's going to be kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard just for me to see on my video. But in this red you're seeing, that's for a quarter inch to a half inch of ice. I know that don't sound a lot if you don't know a lot about ice and freezing rain. Uh, freezing rain is looks like rain, but it falls at probably 32 to 31 degrees or lower, and it freezes on everything. Um, if it's straight freezing rain, it's not always going to make the ground look white, but it really sticks on trees, roads, especially if it gets below 31 or 30. And uh, really, it's going to wreak havoc. This is going to be an isolated area in uh, West Virginia, parts of far western Maryland, uh, parts of Virginia, Pennsylvania. An isolated area that can hit really hard by an ice storm with this first system. You look at the National Weather Service here, and uh, I believe this is Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah it is. So um, it's introducing the area, too, um, for this area right here, um, kind of north and east of Pittsburgh. Uh, for freezing rain. It doesn't look that big of a deal here, but I think they're keeping things limited right now until they really figure out what's going on. So if you're in Pittsburgh, it's really looking like a storm, uh, probably mainly um, to y'all's east and north, but uh, we're going to watch this. But as we look here, uh, this is chances for a quarter inch of ice from now through January 27th. So this covers their first storm. 
This is chances. Uh, this is talking about the first storm. So, and this storm looks to occur Monday night into Tuesday. And uh, check it out. It's holding on that area, the same area that the National Weather Service in Baltimore and Washington, D.C. was showing. Uh, this this could really turn into a big-time ice storm and just a very isolated area. So if you live in this area, West Virginia, or in the um, far kind of hilly region of um, Maryland here, I drove through this area when I went to go chase this winter storm a little over a month ago. Um, so it is they're very hilly in this area. So elevations, especially a 1,000 feet up or so, really have a chance to add up with ice. So we're going to look at chances of a half an inch of ice which is a, a, a potential damaging ice storm. Um, uh, check it out. I mean, areas from 20 to 40 percent chance here, especially right in this area in uh, far western uh, Maryland on this tip over here that borders Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Here. So this is going to be a potential for a big time ice storm. So check it out. This is the GFS. And it's going to show both storms. We're going to run through this here. Uh, a little, actually, a little event's going to happen overnight. It's actually going to throw some light snow, uh, maybe some brief, uh, moderate snow in areas that are about to get an ice storm, and then areas that are probably about to get additional snow. So this area right here may be getting hit three times this week. Very impressive. I mean, it is the middle, uh, the end of January. So I mean. It's not super rare, but uh, it's a lot of action in a short period of time. But here comes the ice storm starting up here in the, the mid-Atlantic. Uh, Washington, D.C., y'all might start off as a brief wintry mix, but I don't think this storm's really going to be you all storm. It's going to win uh, 24 to 48 hours at will. But as we get into the frame, we're getting overnight Tuesday into Monday. Ice storm going on. It doesn't look super impressive on the uh, GFS. When we get into the high, uh, the short-range models really starting – this evening into tomorrow, we're really going to see, uh, get an idea on this ice uh, add up here. But uh, ongoing ice going on here. Uh, there's going to be ice all the way up and freezing rain all the way up into Pennsylvania. So we get going. I think there's going to be a brief chance for some snow and, and a, a wintry mix here in New York City uh, in northern New Jersey, areas of uh, north, more northern Pennsylvania and even New York State here. And uh, the snow might briefly make it to Boston. It'll be all snow in Boston. So maybe a period of some light snow um, Tuesday evening into overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. So um, that's going to be something uh, to watch for in y'all's area. I don't think it'll be a, a very significant event. But here comes the big system that we've been talking about for what seems like uh, years, really. <laughs> but um, here it comes. Here comes the low pressure. Here's the high pressure. The uh, piece of the tr uh, the piece I was about to call it the tropical vortex. <laughs> the piece of the polar, polar vortex here. Uh, is knocked over our high pressure over here. So yes, it's still a strong high pressure, but it's really not throwing in the cold air we want. Now, thank, uh, thankfully for areas who do want winter weather, um, it's climo-wise a very uh, the, one of the coldest times of the year. So um, even areas in Virginia, it's cold enough for heavy wet snow. But check it out here. You back it up a frame, and yes, Tennessee. I've not mentioned y'all much at all, and I know I got some people who watch in Tennessee. But yes, y'all do have a chance to see some snow. Um, it's a classic event where low pressure is pulling away and the energy, upper level low, whatever you want to call it, the energy right back here. Uh, cold air starts to feed through. Nashville might be a rain-snow mix. It'll be an area, cool area to watch. But the mountains might get a good several inches of snow, depending on where you are, of uh, Tennessee and North Carolina. But really, we've been talking about this. And here comes the low pressure. Uh, it scoots east instead of riding up and becoming like a nor'eastern. And this thing really goes through what you call bombogenesis and really explodes um, in strength. Um, and check out this. Now, you see yellows as in heavy, heavy rain, but really, this area could be heavy snow. Um, this is just something we're going to watch. I'm going to go through several uh, model runs right here, um, too. But uh, this is some heavy snow. Um, now, it, the accumulation map isn't reflecting that just because it's trying to show this is rain, and it might be. Because we're dealing with a lot of marginal uh, cold air at the surface here. Um, the 580s, you know, the uh, what I'm meaning is the air up top is actually cold enough, but the surface is struggling. Um, not a lot of surface, uh, not not much help with that. So, But as this thing really bombs out, you're getting a lot of heavy precipitation being thrown back, and the air starts to cool. You get what you call dynamic cooling, and this is showing that, showing hints of this. So um, the... Uh, the uh, eastern areas of Virginia, the coastal areas, Delaware, um, areas of Maryland that doesn't normally get snow like the southeastern portion. Um, <clears throat> I said Delaware. New Jersey is going to be close. This is going to be very close for y'all. Um, 
there's a chance. I hate to say this for Washington, D.C., but there's a chance y'all might miss on the first storm and cut it super close on the second storm just because the heaviest precipitation might not make it to y'all. I am pulling for y'all because I understand the snow drought. Trust me, here in Columbia, South Carolina, I know our climate is a heck of a lot different than y'all's, but I understand the frustration. Uh, normally, it seems, like we, it seems like we used to get here, to air, here, even if it was a minor event, every one or two, every two to three years or so. But now, it, we are almost seven years without getting any, really any accumulating any kind of winter weather here in Columbia, South Carolina. So I understand the frustration. We're in a terrible drought down here, too. But this storm really has a chance to um, throw some heavy snow, especially in Virginia and in North Carolina, too. It's a very interesting setup. So this is what the GFS shows. Notice right here, the first storm, this is going to be mainly, this is the GFS trying to show snow is freezing rain, but really this is freezing rain falling, not four inches of freezing rain. But uh, it's just adding whatever's falling, this wintery precipitation as like it's snow. Here comes our other storm. Like I said, throws, uh, throws a little signal of some snow here. Of course, you got this big daddy system up here uh, that's associated with that first storm, but I, I haven't been talking about that much because normally I don't talk about that region right there, but... Uh, that has been a storm a lot, of, a lot of these channels have been talking about a lot, and, and it's definitely warranted. I mean, that's a big-time storm in Iowa here. But check it out here. We're through the entire run. I know it does not look that impressive. Uh, I agree. That's because this area right here was showing rain, but this definitely could be snow. The entire state of Virginia could possibly get a snowstorm for sure. Check out the higher elevations of North Carolina, Tennessee Mountains, West Virginia. And look, this area could, could get snow on top of ice. Um, so this is very impressive. It's starting to show snow into Delaware, Maryland, uh, coastal areas of uh, Virginia here. Uh, so this is definitely something, this is definitely a scenario. So what we got here is the European model. And I'm going to go run through a few more too. So uh, stay with me if, if you're interested. Um, <clears throat> as we're going here, uh, it's, check it out. It, it does a really good job, I think, right here showing this potential ice storm here. Um, for areas. It's definitely reflecting the higher elevations. We're definitely going to see a lot of ice here. But uh, it really shows a nice little thump of snow for New York City, northern New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York. And uh, I really do think it's going to make it to Boston. I don't think it's going to be a lot, but maybe a, maybe, maybe a little bit, enough to cover the ground, make it look white. So that system moves through. Um, we get this next system. Here it goes. Um, this is our next system cranking up. And uh, like I said, um, the, the European has been trending a little bit better for areas, say, North Carolina and things like that. But uh, Virginia, uh, this is looking good for a snowstorm right here. It's not going to be anything significant or anything like that, but uh, this is definitely showing snow right here. We flip it to the next frame, uh, and like I said, the snow makes it all the way to the eastern areas of Virginia. They normally don't see snow. Um, so in Delaware, New Jersey, um, southern areas of New Jersey, I'm really pulling for y'all. This is going to be a very, very close for y'all, but I just don't know. And check it out, Washington, D.C., right in here, right in this area. <laughs> I am pulling for y'all. I'm going to say it multiple times because uh, it looks like it's just going to be super close for you guys. So and I, this will be a show a good represent, representation of this. And, and, and here's the snow, a little bit of snow showing. I don't have Boston in this view. My bad, Boston. Um, but uh, this is the, where the freezing rain could fall with the first system. Here comes the second. And poor Washington, D.C., uh, it really takes what you call the shaft. Um, I'm pulling for you guys. Do, uh, if, if I'm in Washington, D.C., I, I, would not, I would not look at the models and believe everything they say right now because this storm could really tweak in y'all's favor. Looks like y'all might be uh, too south, too warm for the first system, and too north for the heaviest precipitation, even though it would fall as snow. Um, but I know this isn't very impressive totals at all in Virginia, a couple inches. Um, but this has a chance. This has a big time uh, boom chance. What I mean is it has a chance to overperform and throw, uh, and throw something major at us at the last second. But I can tell you over the last 48 hours, the, the, the model runs have been a lot less amped with the storm. They're not as aggressive with the snowfall totals and uh, with the second system at all. So that is definitely something to watch. This is the UK Met. I don't actually have the storm going through, but I'm going to show you what the snowfall accumulations is showing. It's very spotty. <clears throat> and because it shows that low pressure getting off the coast and really exploding, it throws some heavy snow in northeastern North Carolina, all the way to the coast, Elizabeth City. 
Talking about you guys, some, some heavy snow. It shows a mini snowstorm in this area. And then in southeastern Virginia, Norfolk, talking about y'all. And at, uh, at good old Washington, D.C. just uh, takes the, the – just gets screwed here. So I'm not going to lie here. So, But uh, the mountains, uh, y'all fare well here. But it's a very spotty-looking weird storm. So we're not going to know what this storm is going to do until in a couple days. It's going to take a while to figure this out. Now we look at the icon. We flip through um, – here it comes the first storm. The icon doesn't really reflect wintery mix of precipitation. It's just kind of rain and snow. So we'll just skip that first storm. But here comes the next one. The low pressure on the icon shifts pretty far south. Um, and here comes the snow. Even in North Carolina, it's there. Uh, a decent snow event for uh, Virginia, the majority of the state. But once again, the heavy the precipitation just really doesn't make it to Washington, D.C., um, it's snowing in parts of North Carolina, uh, very close to Raleigh. Um, and it really, this low pressure starts to strengthen right here. And it will give a chance for brief heavy snow in this area right here in far southeastern Virginia near Norfolk and maybe Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Uh, who knows, maybe in the northern ends of the Outer Banks here. Um, but here comes the snowfall accumulation for the icon as we blitz through here real quick. Um, here comes right here. Here comes the storm. So, no, not 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 impressive either. It's very very. It's not that amped at all. But here's a high area of three inches around the North Carolina Virginia border. So, I, I I can tell you, anybody who likes winter weather in North Carolina will take anything, even if it's an inch, especially for a storm like this that has really trended away. But um, we're gonna look at the European ensembles here, and it's not that impressive either. Here you go. You flip through. There's still a little bit of a signal right here. In North Carolina, but um, it shows you that little area of one to two inches for um, Virginia where the storm system can bomb out here and throw some heavy snow right the last second. But Washington, D.C., you're down to one inch on the European ensembles. So, yes, I know. That is very frustrating if I was you guys. Um, it, it sounds like us almost. <laughs> uh, here in Columbia, about four or five days out, we're in a perfect spot. But each day gets closer. It's like we all of a sudden we were looking like we were going to get a couple inches of snow and then we end up in a 38 degree rain so that's normally how it works down here in south carolina but um <clears throat> the gfs ensembles here uh it still shows a nice signal there for washington dc uh and it's very similar for the same areas in virginia and north carolina so one thing i want to briefly talk about here I'm not going to hold on to much because we have a lot to talk about this week but as we get through, and this is the latest European, it's just one operational model. Here comes that, first, that, that, that last system here. But as we get into the weekend, watch this little sneaky system that's all of a sudden showing up. And it's going to be interesting to really see if this starts to show up on any other models. But look at this. Guys, this is this coming weekend. This is Saturday night into Sunday morning. Um, and this is a, a winter weather event breaking out in North Carolina. Another one. Um, and it almost honestly looks kind of similar to the one we're going to get this week. Um, but this has a chance to trend better. So um, we're going to watch this too. Uh, it's going to be a storm system that might be talked about a little bit later in the week. And this actually might give Washington, D.C. another opportunity. So technically three to four storms here as we uh, round out January. Very, very impressive stretch we're about to go through. And uh, this storm actually gets a lot stronger and um, turns more into maybe a nor'eastern type storm and uh, for uh, later in the week. So this is going to be interesting to watch. Interesting time. It almost looks like another one starts building up with a little bit of cold air in place. So um, actually a favorable pattern as we enter um, the, this, get into the last week of January and get into the first part of February. But after that, it gets weird. And I can tell you one thing. The European could totally flip to a warm solution here. Um, I tell you what, models have been not that great. And I'm just here to talk about the models. Uh, it seems like the more followers I get, the more subscribers I get, the more, uh, they're not bad comments, but some of you guys comment and um, disagree in kind of a super negative way or or kind of uh, sarcastically accuse of hyping. I'm not trying to hype you guys. I'm just talking, breaking down the models for you guys and throwing in my knowledge on what I think is going to happen. So. I do appreciate everybody who comments. Definitely comment. Leave your opinion. It's appreciated. I'm not going to diss on you back. Um, it's the internet. Y'all free to do whatever y'all want. But um, just, just keep the comments nice and uh, keep them uh, civil. 
And uh, I appreciate every single one of y'all. So y'all have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a great start to your week. And uh, we'll break some things down tomorrow as we get closer and closer to the storm system. Y'all have a blessed evening.